everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are really excited today. We have a huge hall star here. We are talking with James Denton. This is so exciting. Thank you so much, James, for coming on the podcast. Well, thank you, Rachel. I am proud to be a huge hall star. Yes, that's right. Um, so this is your first time on the podcast. So we like to, for our guests, get to know you a little bit. And so tell us a little bit about uh, what inspired you to get into acting. How'd you get started? Wow. It feels so boring to me when I tell it, but it was certainly uh, unconventional. I was a, I was an actor when I grew up. I grew up in a small country town in Tennessee. Um, acting wasn't an option as a vocation. And so I, was, I went into sales. I was an ad guy, you know, like Mad Men. I sold advertising time for started a newspaper, then radio, then uh, actually CBS television affiliates. And I was uh, somebody talked to me doing community theater as a hobby um, because they thought I would for some reason thought I would be good at it. So I did it and fell in love with it and, you know, got some silly, nice little reviews in local papers. And people kept asking me why you don't do it for a living. And I thought, ah, it's no who does who can get paid to act, you know. And then I was about to turn 30 and single and I hated my job. I was a suit and tie briefcase guy in a cubicle, you know, and uh, had done enough. By that time, I'd done probably 10 or 12 community theater plays only and just kind of jumped and moved to Chicago instead of New York, which was the key. If I'd gone to New York, I'd probably be selling advertising today because it's a much tougher town. But Chicago is very warm and welcoming. And um, if you're if you're any good and wanting to work for cheap, you can stay on stage in Chicago. There are so many low paying, non paying theaters. So I was in Chicago six years, I did 16 plays in my six years there and somebody saw me uh, in a play and called who is still my my manager today, John Crosby, and said, there's this kid in, on stage in Chicago, I think he'd work in LA. Um, and he, they, he submitted me for a pilot on uh, at Paramount for CBS. And they flew me out, which is unheard of, super lucky. So while I was in LA for that test, I ran around. He took me and introduced some agents. I got an agent and decided I should stay. Um, so I stayed and uh, was very, very lucky. Uh, but that's unconventional beginning. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was great. I'm a theater guy. I never intended to be in front of the camera. So this yeah. has been, been a weird ride. Yeah, that's great. I saw that on your IMDb that you started in theater. And is that something you still like, you have a love for, would like to someday uh, do yes. Yeah, yeah, I certainly do. Uh, we um, uh, moved to Minnesota right when Desperate Housewives ended to get the kids out of L.A., basically, and, and uh, their mom's mm -hmm. family is all here um, so they could grow up with their cousins and aunts and uncles and grandparents and um, and go to good schools. So when yeah. we moved up here in 2012, we're like, oh, what am I going to do? And I started doing theater again. I did two big equity plays. Um, it was a lot of fun, and that helped a lot just because that's what I love so much. And actually, um, when we were watching, when my wife and I were watching uh, Desperate Housewives, um, which we didn't do all the time, but like about season seven, she looked at me and said, you need to get on stage and learn how to act again. <laughs> which was good advice because uh, she, she was a theater actress. Um, so uh, it, it's good for me. And, it, and I think it's uh, it's a good workout. So yes, I hope to do more of that. Um, yeah. But you have to find a way to pay your bills, right? Yeah. I love theater. I'm a huge. Oh, it's as an actor, you yeah. can't be it because, you know, if you're good, you own it, you know, it's you. And if you're not, it's on you. There's no editor that pieced it together. You know, I've worked with actors who can't act a lick on TV. And then I watch the show and I'm like, how do they make them look so good? And then I see my own mm -hmm. stuff and, and I've got a pretty realistic opinion of my limitations. Mm -hmm. And I think I know there were better takes than that. I know. So you can be made to look better or worse in theater. You know, it's all, it's all there. And you yeah. get to tell the story every night, which is huge. Yeah. As an actor, we do things so chopped up and out of order um, that being on stage, you get to tell the whole story and go through the whole arc every night. It's really rewarding. And do you do musical theater since you do sing? Uh, ah. You're in a band, at least. <laughs> That's debatable. Um, I actually started in musical theater. My first show was, uh -huh. o was Oklahoma. No and way. I've, I've done a handful of musicals. Um, I'm not good enough to sing in professional musical mm -hmm. theater. Um, but I get by like we were able Jack Lenz was the music uh, supervisor on Perfect Harmony, the movie that's coming out now. And yeah. he was on Good Witch. And he, thank heavens, is a is a witch with uh, uh, pitch, pitch control and auto tune. So he, <laughs> he made us both because Sherry and I both sing some. But, you know, to be on yeah. TV, you better be really good and be professional. It takes a lot of work which she and I hadn't done. So you can sweeten it and make it better. But, I, you know, I, I can get mm -hmm. by. 
Fans of the hit family drama Heartland know that Up Faith and Family is the only place to stream seasons 1 through 15 of Heartland, including hours of behind the scenes exclusive content. All 15 seasons of Heartland are available and ready to binge only on Up Faith and Family. If you love dramatic shows full of action and suspense, try the two new series, Mystic and Hudson and Rex. Binge both shows anytime on Up Faith and Family. Watch new series and premiere feel good films like Finding Love in San Antonio, which debut first on Up Faith and Family. Go to upfaithandfamily.com slash hallmarkies today to sign up for your 14 day free trial. That's upfaithandfamily.com slash hallmarkies to sign up. So you had done a role on JAG early on. Did you meet Catherine Bell? There, I did not. I was, on Jag, I was on Jag twice as different characters. Uh-huh. I was on in season like season two and then season nine, uh, but I never worked with Catherine. Just oh, worked okay. with Emily both times. Yeah, I wish I had. We joked about it, but I, I d- didn't work with her. Mm, okay, so how did you end up getting the role on Desperate Housewives? How did that all happen? It's funny. I um, I, I, my story is weird in that it was kind of a climb, like in another line of work, which doesn't happen in acting because it's not a meritocracy. You know, a lot yeah. of this. But I started and did a few guest stars. And then I was a series regular on The Pretender uh, for a couple of seasons back in the late 90s. And then I was um, a lead on a show called Philly with uh, it was a Steve Bochco courtroom drama of Kim Delaney, which was really great. My first big role. And then I and then that was ABC. And then they gave me the lead in a show called Threat Matrix, which only lasted one season. But they put us on Thursday night against the final season of Friends and the first season of Survivor. It's at eight o'clock on yeah. night. So we got, we got pounded. So that lasted one year. Um, and one of the producers got assigned to this new pilot called Desperate Housewives. And um, he told Mark Sherry, he said, look, Jamie's been, you know, he's a good soldier. He, he shows up, doesn't bump into the furniture. He knows his lines. And, um, and so they, they had me come in and they didn't test anybody else. They had me come in and read for Delfino and gave it to me. And so mm-hmm. it was going to end up being, you know, the number one show in the world for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that must have been a, a really fun ensemble to be a part of. Oh, it was the time of, yeah. time of life. It was, you know, fantastic just because, you know, you you labor on so many shows. And I've been on so many TV shows where when anybody in a suit came in that you didn't recognize, you were sure you were canceled. You know, you were waiting for them to pull the rug out from under you. And Housewives, we knew we'd be, we'd be there as long as Mark Cherry wanted to be. So that was rewarding. And just knowing in this recognition, but not to be recognized just that people are watching what you're doing because I've been on so many shows that you feel like nobody sees this. So that was fun. Just knowing that the work was getting out there was, was yeah. very, very cool. Well, and there was a certain degree of sort of camp in the, in the oh. scripts that were, I think would be fun to kind of play off each other. Oh yeah. Season one was as good as TV gets. There really was had that dark mystery and was really funny and was very sexy. Um, mm-hmm. But then as it went on and we had some ups and downs some really tough years, mm-hmm. Um, and then some great ones, but the audience stayed with it. And yeah, it was about as candy as it gets. You know, I, I was in a coma for a while and we had, they mm-hmm. finally got Terry and, and Mike, Susan and Mike together. And then they realized, wait, people loved the, well, they won't they. So they do a five-year jump wherein we had gotten divorced so they could get us together again. So in the Hallmark movie of Christmas, I married Terry Hatcher for the fourth time on camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was pretty fun. Yeah. You're like, we're getting good at this after a while. <laughs> I know it's, yeah. it's, uh, we're getting good at it. Yeah. Uh, so you got to play uh, Reba's boyfriend on her yes. show. That must have been very fun. Love her. One of the yeah, nicest people, talented people I've ever met. Uh, we stayed in touch afterwards, which is unusual. Um, mm-hmm. She sets a tone there. We're top down. It's just that you're going to be good people. You're going to treat each other well. It's a really yeah. fun set. I got to do two of those mm-hmm. and uh, be her love interest, which was fantastic. Yeah, that must have been very surreal. Uh, so we, you were in, or are in, I'm not, uh, you were in a band with Hugh Laurie? And, yeah, band, right? band from TV. We joked about calling it B-A-N-N-E-D. Um, <laughs> and that's where we got the name. But yeah, for uh, and we're still technically a band, but everybody's just scattered to the winds. Jesse Spencer, the dreamy Australian doctor on um, House, played uh-huh. Doctor. He's now on Chicago Fire. Hugh's making his own music, putting out jazz albums and travels the world. Uh, I'm here. Um, but everybody who's a Bachelor Bob, one of the most famous bachelors, Bob Guinea, 
um, is fantastic singer. Scotty Grimes from ER is on another show now, and Adrian Pazdar and Greg Brunberg from Heroes and Lost. So yeah, it was a great thing because all our shows were top 10. So we raised a ton of money. It was all for charity. And we raised over 4 million bucks for charity. Wow. About a seven year period. And of course it was, you know, what philosophers call enlightened self-interest because we got to pretend to be rock stars, but all the money <laughs> went to charity. We played yeah. on American Idol and the Tonight Show and um, Hugh was the big draw um, yeah. because the house was so big and Hugh's a great piano player, great guitar player. And we had a lot of fun guest stars. Terry Hatcher sang with us. Um, John Mayer got up and played with us one night. Wayne Brady was with us, Jennifer Love Hewitt. So we try to rotate the celebrities to keep people coming to raise more money. Yeah. How did that all happen? Greg Grunberg is a drummer and he he's one of those actors. If you don't know him, look him up and you go, oh my gosh, I know Greg. He was in a Star Wars movie, um, Felicity Alias Heroes. Uh -huh. um, and he uh, was asked to put together a band of so-called celebrities um, to raise money at this one event because somebody knew he was a drummer. He had just done a house, so he knew Hugh could play. And Hugh knew Jesse played fiddle. And someone told him that I played guitar. And he knew Bob Guinea, who's a brilliant singer. So we put together this little group to play this one event in L.A. to raise money, for, I think, for an operation for a child. Um, and uh, dozens of people contacted us and said, "Come, will you come play my thing? Um, so we realized it was a great way to raise some money, and we loved doing it. And, um, and it just kind of exploded. And we started playing casinos and all the money would go to charity. And we sent money to over 30 charities. We all got to pick our own. So it was mm -hmm. really, really rewarding. That's great. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, so was it challenging when they brought you over for the Good Witch series? They'd been doing the movies. And mm -hmm. so now you are going to be basically replacing Chris Potter's character mm -hmm. on from the movies. Yeah. Um, was that challenging to kind of take on? Um, you know, it, it was fodder for a lot of jokes. You know, if anything, there's any conflict or, you know, if I forgot a word, some producer would say, we're going to bring Chris Potter back. <laughs> um, but, uh, luckily, Chris was on Heartland and didn't yes. really do it. He was busy. Um, right. So it wasn't like they just fired him because he was great and everybody loved mm -hmm. him. Uh, the fans loved him. So it made sense for me to do it or for someone else to do it because he wasn't available. And they had wanted right. to make a Good Witch a series, but Catherine was on Army Wise. So once Army Wise was canceled, they snatched her up and said, okay, what do we do for a love interest? And it just so happened, I was uh, hosting the Hero Dog Awards. Um, and I was filling in for Terry Bradshaw, who had a family emergency and couldn't do it. And uh, Bill Abbott, at the time running Hallmark, was in the audience and said, he'd be great with Cassie. And they just called me and offered it to me. It was the luckiest most, you know, gift from the universe or God that I've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, I just moved to Minnesota. We shot in Toronto. So I flew back and forth every weekend. Um, and uh, it just happened because Bill Abbott picked me off of the stage at Hero Dog Awards. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed any time you got to play uh, off with, uh, you got to play with um, Bailey. I have a scene with yes. Bailey. Yeah, that was so always really fun. Uh, and her, uh, Teaching her to drive and taking yes. her to her to that yeah. wasn't a spelling bee. It was some kind of a math quiz or something. Yeah, the yeah. math bond. We got a lot of fun sort of ersatz father-daughter stuff because, you know, I, I wasn't really her dad, but she's such a good actress and people love her. Yeah. Well, and then with Reese as well, mm -hmm. uh, just anytime you were in dad mode, I think that was, that was good. Well, thanks. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And that was the most fun we had. I honestly, between you and me, since nobody's listening, you know, just us, right? Nobody's watching. <laughs> right, it's, just, right. it's a private conversation. I feel like that's where the show kind of lost its way a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, toward the end, there was much not ain't not enough of Cassie for my taste. Yeah. But also there was there was as much of Sam and Cassie as a couple dealing with, you know, family issues and domestic things that everybody could relate to. Um, so I think that probably at the end um hurt us a little bit as the viewership declined. Not a lot, but a little bit. Yeah, I can see that. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. I think the, the Sam Cassie family stuff with Reese and Bailey. Of course, Bailey got so busy, as did Reese. And when they went away to college, we ran out of storylines. And as you know, teenage storylines aren't really what Hallmark does. So it became a problem to really utilize them in a way that made sense because they were both so talented and busy actors. Mm -hmm. That was sort of why they went away to college. Yeah. I did like, though, that your character, for it being a you know, female oriented, uh, Cassie is obviously the, the lead character, but you did have some of your own arcs, which I appreciated, like you going and uh, the whole plot line with them um, going to Guatemala. Yeah. 
And, Which is uh, crazy because we had to shoot it in Canada in the winter. Right. <laughs> we were freezing to death uh, with all of the, the fans. It was supposed to be a, a typhoon or a hurricane. Uh -huh. um, and uh, so we had all these big wind machines. It was about 28 degrees. Yeah. Um, but uh, but that was fun. And I agree. They did a lot of great things with Sam. We decided about season three that Sam needed a life because he became sort of a puppy dog that just followed Cassie around. So we yeah. brought in Scott Cavaliero to play Adam, the hospital priest, who I love, one of the nicest guys in the world. And and so and brought in some different friends. Sean Gallagher came in and played a friend of Sam's one year. He ran a brewery, if you remember that character. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was they, they did a lot. I was lucky because the show is clearly about Catherine. But I got a lot of fun stuff to do, mm -hmm. and yeah. I got into that time. You remember playing basketball and Fred was oh yeah yeah again, and and so yeah, there was like a lot of cool stuff. Well, and we love Catherine Disher on this podcast. Oh my god, who doesn't? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yes. Martha! I love uh, Catherine Disher. Oh, and couldn't be further from Martha than anybody <laughs> ever met. She's so calm and sweet and really crazy smart. Mm -hmm. uh, a brilliant actress, but boy, she brought so much to that show. Yeah, it, she was always brought the funny to any scene. Oh, and, and, the, and, and gravitas. I mean, she can act. Yeah. But oh, you're yeah. Right. She brought the energy we needed, but the few times that Martha had to uh, be serious, it was fun, I think, because she could show off her chops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it must have, because I know she did some, at least some improving uh, in a scene. And that must have been fun to to be in a scene. Uh, oh like yeah, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Where for some reason she was pretending to have a foot ailment when Sam was new in town, so he would come by her office and and, and rub her feet, you know. Uh -huh. and, she, and Kathy did this thing where she was laughing and she snorted, I like actually, woo! And it was we all laughed so hard and like I don't think we can use that, and I don't think they did eventually, but we all <laughs> broke up. And there's that scene where early on she's challenging Sam to something, some kind of a contest. Mm -hmm. like, I challenge you. And oh, it was, yeah. So it became challenge from then on. So <laughs> we, got to bring it, we got to pull out challenge a few times <laughs> over the Wasn't years. Wasn't it making the pumpkin pie? Wasn't that one of them? I think it was, yeah. yeah. Or, you yeah. know, or the chili contest or, <laughs> or racing, racing pumpkin boat. I don't know, Rachel. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. And so Good Witch was filmed in Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, so you said you just went back and forth from LA to... Yeah. John Eskinis uh, ran that show um, along with Craig Price and they did all the movies. And John actually and I are almost partners. We did the, both Perfect Harmony and Kiss Before Christmas together. And he mm -hmm. personally, it wasn't in my contract, but he knew how important my kids were to me. And they were both in middle school. And he flew me home every weekend oh, out, of, out of his budget. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I'm forever grateful for that as are my kids. So yeah, I, I was never gone more than four or five days and they gave me a bunch of Fridays and Mondays off because Catherine could do it because she was in LA. So it wasn't, and she was the same way about missing her kids, but I was able to do it every single weekend. Thanks to John. No, that's good. Hello. I'm Hannah. And I'm Katie. And we have a podcast called One Kiss Means Forever. Do you love made-for-TV rom-coms? Are you obsessed with Hallmark and all the Hallmark-inspired copycats that have come out on other platforms like Netflix? And while being obsessed, do you know that these are not what one might call quality films? <laughs> if so, come listen to our podcast. Each episode, we discuss one movie that did not have a theatrical release and always ends in a happily ever after. And how do we know it will end in a happily ever after? Because one kiss means forever, of course. So join us as we deep dive into each movie for about 45 minutes. Episodes drop every other Thursday, except during the very elongated Hallmark Christmas season when we join the Christmas craze and go weekly for about two and a half months. Bye! Bye. Yeah. Well, so last year you had a kiss before Christmas. Mm -hmm. I love the movie. It was my favorite on Hallmark last year. I really enjoyed it. You're saying um, a lot. So I, I yeah. can't tell you how much I appreciate it when I heard that. And you know, I, I reached out to you guys yeah. to thank you because it's a lot of competition and a lot of great movies. And I know you guys are very picky. So uh, I was, so that was no joke. That was, that was an honor, an honor for us. I appreciate it. Well, I, we, I appreciated that email. We were all, so I read it to the, to the girls in our group chat and then we were all like, we're so excited. Uh, so thank you for reaching out. And um, I just, 
I really, cause they've done this kind of sort of take on the family man kind of a thing where uh, before, but the way it's always usually done is somebody gets a family that they didn't have and they get, cause they, you know, chose business and then they get to see what their life could have been like if they, uh, if they had right. done that. But in this case, right. they did the opposite. They took away. Yes. And I think that makes so much more sense because when the problem with the other way is that you get invested in this family that's not real and isn't there. Uh, and so when the movie ends, he, he's alone, you know, then it has to kind of, it makes it tricky, I think. Whereas oh, in this case, tricky. yes, in this case, he had it taken away, which you immediately like feel for him. And I, it was just so much more easy to kind of invest in the story. I thought the structure was smart. Oh, thank you. We yeah. spent a lot, I mean, as a producer on it, you know, a lot of people, actors get producer credits and it's just to get, you know, make another right. book. But I was very hands-on, more so in Perfect Harmony even than, than Kiss. But we did a lot of script revisions, a lot of story changes because we weren't plowing a lot of new ground. You know, there's, I can't, I think it's Family Man with Nick Cage. Is that the Yeah, Christmas? yeah. And then it's, it, so it's a Wonderful Life is the one everybody pointed to. Uh, so there were, it's been, it, the idea had been done um, and even Heaven Can Wait. So we wanted to find a different angle. And also Hallmark's tricky because you have to be very careful about um, positivity. Yeah. So when he loses his kids and he realizes, oh, I got in the wrong elevator that day and we never met, then his kids are dead. Yeah, <laughs> they, never, they never lived. So that was a tricky one for us, which is why we had them be adopted. That was so smart. Yeah. And then yeah. he sees them with other parents. And like, yeah. Yeah, because we didn't want those kids, because you meet the kids and then poof, they never existed. And that's that was something that's in a movie, a it's not a big deal. You don't do that on Hallmark. People don't yeah. want to see, they don't want the, the, too much heavy. Um, so that was tricky and that was a good fix. And also just Terry's a genius. And you know, she was able to play both those characters wildly differently, you mm -hmm. know, as if her character had lived two very different lives. Um, and uh, getting her was the key. I mean, when we, yeah. John and I brought it to the network, I said, I'm not sure I can do this if I don't get Terry. Um, because if you think about that, those characters are very, very different. Um, the teacher sure. mom and then the hugely successful, rich lawyer mom. And she was so good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I mean, to get Mary Lou Henner on board. Yes. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. She's yeah. the best. She was, she was fantastic. Yeah, I love her. Uh, so yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, moving and sweet and funny. The the whole thing with the um, what was it the coffee maker? Was oh like, yeah, that yeah. was very yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah. good night, coffee maker. <laughs> yeah, because uh, he, he couldn't figure it out. Yeah, there was a lot yeah. of fun stuff. He couldn't figure out the shower. You know, <laughs> so and yeah, because he's not he's never had any money. So mm -hmm. uh, and also John Lowe, who played Santa Claus, we had the first dark Santa Claus. Because mm -hmm. Santa was a little bit edgy in Kiss Before yeah, Christmas. If anybody true. hasn't seen it, that's enough reason to watch it. Because when, when there's a scene where um, my character's out in the driveway talking to his driver, and he's a little bit confused, and you see Santa walk by in his house by mm -hmm. the windows, which is like he's broken in, but he's Santa. And you go right. in, so you did this. And he's like, yeah, be careful what you wish for. And then that you see it dawn on my character. I was like, where's my family? And he's like, you didn't want them. So yeah. it's fun to have a Santa that was doing the right thing and was benevolent, but still had a little bit of an air. Yeah, that's true. That's and John's also true. in perfect, John's also in perfect harmony. A little Easter oh. egg. Watch out for Santa Claus in perfect harmony. Well, going to that, tell us a little bit about perfect harmony. You have it coming up. Uh, tell us a little bit about the movie. Oh my gosh. Well, my character, uh, Jack Chandler is a one hit wonder pop star, sort of his big uh -huh. song called Ooey Oo. Sort of to make him seem as ridiculous as possible, um, and he's um, he's lost his wife. He has a college age son, played by my son Shepard Denton, who is fantastic for a kid. He's not an actor. He's acted twice in his life in the movie we did for Love and Honor for Hallmark seven years ago in this movie. But anyway, so he plays my yeah. college age son, and I, uh, our, my best friends are getting married, and the the maid of honor and I have never gotten along. They've always kept us separated. We've always been oil and water since they met. But they want us to be to do the wedding together, so we're forced to do that. And through a, you know some um, unfortunate events, we end up I end up having to perform at the rehearsal dinner, which I'm very much against because after my wife died, I had some 
pretty bad years and performances. And I thought, I don't have it anymore. I'm never doing that again. Um, and then they get the crazy idea. They want the maid of honor and myself to perform at the wedding. And we can't stand each other. And you that's all explained. And it's pretty mm-hmm, smart. Mm-hmm. So that, that's how it starts. You can imagine how it ends. Yeah. Um, but it's full of original music. Ooh, you is a brilliant song. Jack Lenz wrote it. And it's a, such an earwig. And John Eskinus wrote some of the verses. Um, and then there's another Perfect Harmony is an original song uh, by Jack uh, in the wedding. And um, I, all the guitar is, is live. I play all the guitar. The, there's a big concert scene, which is very different for Hallmark. It looks, it's really cool. Well, we're really excited, not only for the movie, but uh, one of our patrons for, that supported our podcast, Alicia Lomas Gross, wrote Alicia. this movie. So that's so I fun. I am woefully remiss for letting you bring up Alicia before I <laughs> because Alicia, this thing sat on this shelf for, this is part of my Good Witch deal. The last of my three movies and my Good Witch deal uh, was for Love and Honor, Kiss Before Christmas. And this was the last one. Uh-huh. And we couldn't We couldn't get it right. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, finally, uh, Alicia just came in and, and wrote a brilliant script with really pithy, funny, catchy um, dialogue, lots of banter, you know, we call it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's exactly what it is. And, and we fell in love with it immediately. And it was enough for the network to go, oh, yeah, this will just make this movie. So Alicia, Alicia uh, helped get this movie made. That's awesome. We're so excited for her. Uh, we're, and... dying, we're dying to use her again. So mm-hmm. uh, yes. the next, if, we, uh, yeah, if we have another, and you know, we have a few things in the pipeline. Um, Sweet. Well, she's, she's the top of my list. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Also has uh, Peter and Julia Benson in yes. the movie. So that's fun. Yeah, real life Both couple. Bensons. Yeah, we went around and around about who to cast as the couple that's getting married, Naomi and Simon, because uh, mm-hmm. they're very tricky roles because they can't just be one note. You know, you guys get along. You know, it can't, yeah. be, it can't be that. And they're both so talented. You know, Peter's a great director, too. A lot of Hallmark mm-hmm. movies. So, yeah, yeah, it was fun having a real life couple um, get married and they they work together so well. So in the movie, I've been told, I mean, I know it works with Peter and Julia, but also with my son and, and me, that the chemistry is very different in this movie because you have some built-in family right. history with four of the characters, um, things that you can't fake, things that happen in scenes with my son that you just don't happen with a stranger. Right. Um, and so that we got that with Peter and Julia along with some great acting. Mm-hmm. So how did Shepard end up becoming involved in the in the movie? He did some middle school plays in which he was fantastic. Mm-hmm. So he could act. Um, his mom's a brilliant actress. She quit acting years ago, but she's much better than I am. Um, but but he so he's a natural. I mean, mm-hmm. he's just really good. And I knew he could act because you can tell you can either act or you can't. It's kind of hard to learn. Um, sure. And seeing him in these middle school plays, he did some things that that his mom and I were like, the kid can yeah. do it. But we were in Minnesota yeah. and you don't want to encourage that as a lifestyle or a living because it's too, you know, it's such a long shot. So when I got to do For Love and Honor, I had a chance to, to test the theory. And he played a cadet in that military school movie on Hallmark. You can still find it, I think. Um, mm-hmm. And he was fantastic. He was only 13. He was way too young. He, the character was supposed to be a senior. But um, he, he, he was fantastic. Uh, but then this one, really, he had to step up. A lot of father, son more adult stuff that he confronts. And it's, I think it's it's a little bit more dramatic than most Hallmark movies, which is why it's on HMM. Yeah. They, they struggle with some stuff as, you know, two guys living alone 
and the fact that he almost lost me um, in my depression when I quit the business. And he's tough on dad. He has some conversations with dad mm-hmm. about, you look, you got to take care of yourself. And um, so. Uh, so did he have to audition, you know, no, for the to, role? To their, or? To, their, to their credit, uh, Stefan Scaney, brilliant director uh, who directed some Goodwitch episodes. And John Eskins, who I keep mentioning, um, I told them, I said, look, I know he can do it. And they trusted me. And I went ahead and had him do what would be a self-tape for any other actor. And I sent it to them just for my own peace of mind to say, look, look at it and see if I'm a crazy dad and see what you think. And they both were like, we're not going to find that anywhere else. Uh, certainly not. In, well, I hate to, don't want to degrade Winnipeg, but it's tougher to find actors and that's yeah. type in a smaller town. So they said they were very comfortable. And I think one, uh, Laura Gaines, who was the executive, again, very indebted to Laura for getting this movie made. She was the Hallmark connection. And she asked John, can he do it? <laughs> and John said, yeah, he actually put it, we put him on tape and, and he's, he's as good as anybody we saw when we were looking at teenagers for a uh, kiss before Christmas. So yeah, they basically, and I owe Hallmark for that. They didn't even make an audition for, for love and honor. Um, so, I mean, where else would you, would a network let you just cast your son sight unseen? Uh, not many places. So I, I'm indebted to them. It's the best time of my career. The two two best things in my career were this and for love and honor. You know, spending uh, five weeks with my son in the middle of nowhere, Canada, um, and uh, working together. It was uh, it was fantastic. So I I owe Hallmark for that. Right. So this one was made in Winnipeg, you said. Yeah, and again, I said small town. Winnipeg is a pretty great place to shoot. Um, we we shot both movies there, Kiss and this one. Um, and this we shot with Inferno Pictures, uh, Ian Demering. Uh, they're great. I mean, they're, they facilitate everything locally. They found brilliant locations. All the locations are perfect. Um, and that was, that's a tough thing as locations as a new producer is finding locations. And, and, and we found them in Winnipeg and it, you know, they were supposed to be in Austin and, uh, you never know the difference. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, we're really looking also, I can to drive to, I can drive to Winnipeg. Winnipeg is only about seven hours up the road for me in Minneapolis. So Shepard and I both drove. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Well, we like to end our interviews with just some fun, silly questions. So here we go. First is what is the best ice cream flavor? Uh, chocolate mint. Okay, good. What's your favorite color? Blue. Blue. Okay, good. Uh, what music are you into now? Wow. Um, a lot of John Mayer, mm. which I know is not original. But John Mayer's music really changed my son's life. He's a guitar player and he plays in the movie. But uh, John Mayer's free tutorials on YouTube and his style, Shepard just leaps and bounds when he started listening to John. And John played with our band years ago and is a super nice guy. Um, so I, I, I'm kind of a John Mayer trio more than the other stuff. Um, but I'm a Springsteen guy. There's always, there's always Springsteen is uh, right mm. behind whoever I'm listening to on the moment. What is your go-to date night food? Um, sushi. Mm-hmm. I think, I mean, I guess it's tricky because not everybody's a sushi person, but, yeah. but I, I yeah. sushi, yeah, I think that's it. It's a good one. Uh, what is your go-to date night activity if you're going out and doing something? Uh, well, it's, <laughs> I want to say baseball game. But that makes uh-huh. me feel so selfish, but I probably wouldn't be with somebody that didn't like baseball. Um, yeah. But it's also a good date because movies are no good because you don't talk. Right. I mean, you got to go to dinner, right? So it's dinner and something because dinner is a great chance to be across the table from somebody and, and some romance. Well, that's why we always suggest on the podcast, we always just, if you're going to do the dinner movie date, uh, reverse it, go to the movie, then uh, go to dinner. You can talk about yeah. the movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great thing to do. And that's what, when when we would go to movies, it would be talk about it afterwards. But I I would not go to a movie. I think on a date, I would go to a movie on for something else. I mean, people love it, and also it's good if it's an early date and you struggle with things to talk about because that's a brilliant right. idea. Yeah, I mean, go to the movie, go to the movie, and then you're not expected to make small talk, and then afterwards you ha- you have a built-in topic of conversation. So that's yeah. pretty good, Rachel. All right, uh, what do you like better, dogs or cats? Oh, dogs. I'm a dog guy all my life. I've got. I've had so many rescues. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. I like cats too. I've had an appreciation for cats. I have a little place in Montana and we had a real mouse issue 
And we got the best cat at the pound who just wiped out all the mice. It's actually very friendly and affectionate. So I, I've come around on cats too, but if I have to choose, I'm a dog guy. Yeah. All right. Beaches or mountains? What's your favorite? You know, just mentioned Montana. Um, if I had to choose beaches, I'm a diver and beaches feel more like vacation to mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite holiday to celebrate? Wow. That's hard. That was always Thanksgiving, which was my mom's favorite. And she passed away uh-huh. 20 years ago. Um, and you know, that changes things a little bit when you're, your perception of something. So it was yeah. always Thanksgiving, but that's changed a lot now because I travel so much and the kids are scattered. So um, I guess probably Christmas, because I'm not a big, I don't want to disparage any holidays because people have their favorites. But there are certain holidays other people love that I just, I'm not big on. But Christmas is a, uh, is yeah. hard to deny. So I know it's not yeah. orig- not original, but no, it's hard yeah. to beat Christmas because it's like a whole season. Right? Yes, I mean, it, as opposed I to most, which just a day. And I loved love giving gifts. I mm-hmm. love trying to come up with something to give somebody who's hard to buy for. Yeah, and, uh, and then doing it. And so I, I, I love gift giving. <laughs> My I dad, love I love it. My dad is impossible. It is so hard to find him a present. Oh, but, <laughs> I always tell my kids, don't even try because I, it, it's so hard. Yeah. 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 All right. Last question. What is your favorite Hallmark or romantic movie? And you can pick one of your own. No judgment if you want. Um, I really like Lacey. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, what else I love is Sarah Power, who had a pretty good one. Mm-hmm. And the movie was not as great as she is. Um, yeah. So I'd love to pick one called? of them. Yeah, it was a light. No, it was a, Nantucket Noel yes, or something. Nantucket, yeah, yeah. And it yeah. was not. It wasn't a great movie. Um, but it certainly, but she's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. you guys weren't crazy about it. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't my favorite, but it had its moments. I really liked the um this the side characters that were um the theater yeah. troupe running the theater. They were funny to me. Yeah. Yeah. They made the movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I'm going to I have to say and this is awful, but it's perfect harmony. Mm-hmm. We finished we just delivered it 2 days ago. Um it's a good movie. I mean all the editors yeah. this, is, this is a feature. Um this movie's a feature. One of the guys, the first guy that 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 cut it was like is he couldn't believe it was because we worked very hard to make it look bigger. And then Sherry Psalm is a revelation in this. If you don't know her, oh. Foster's, she's perfect as a, a poetry professor um, who's very shy and had a lot of been a lot of rejection with her work and trying to get her out of her shell and start writing again. And we didn't know if she could sing or not, and she can sing her face off. Um, and yeah, and Peter and Julia, and with my son, and it's super romantic. I mean, we turn it up to eleven. There are there are almost so many that you wonder how it's going to be topped. Is it? Oh, is it too early for that? Uh-huh. And, and then we because we thought if nothing else, this has to be romantic. Yeah, um, and, and it's at eleven. Oh. So I'm going to say because it hasn't aired, and hopefully that'll drive some more people to it. I really, <laughs> I really believe, um, and we've had a couple of execs say this. Mm-hmm. That is the best they've done. So fingers crossed. And I, I hope you like it. Yeah, well, definitely hyped up. That I'm really looking forward to it. I know so. I because <laughs> I'm a big believer in low expectations, but um, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't do anybody any good if I sit here and tell you it's awful. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I I I I mean I, I generally do like most. I find something to like about almost all of them. Every yeah. once in a while there's one I don't. Well, it's really hard. That's like. the thing with, with Sarah's, you yeah. know. Um she's a brilliant actress and it had a lot of great scenes, but it's hard. They do so many that it's a real yeah. challenge. It's a challenge. And so and it's a credit to the network that as many are as good as they are when yeah. you're do, when you're doing 80 or 85 a year. Yeah, so, and certain tropes are easier to pull off than others. Mm-hmm. I, I at least for me, the whole um, save the save the store kind of plot yeah. is usually not that interesting to me because I just yeah. don't feel like there's any stakes. There's no chance that they're really going to close the store. And so it's not, no. I don't know. I know exactly what you're saying. It's, yeah. it's and that was why this one, we searched long and hard and got the idea because I do play a little and sing a little. Okay, let's do some yeah. of the music. I know they've yeah. done some. I know Jesse plays. 
Um, but I've never seen a movie that really featured it. They had a lot of original music. And so we tried to use that to, to set things apart a little and yeah. away from and there was a trope we could avoid. There was a phase a couple, like 2019, where a lot of the movies were some form of business meeting, like planning, planning parties, planning festivals, planning. And those were usually a little dry. Yeah, the, festivals, my favorite. the festivals are tough. You know, we always, yeah. had fest, always had festivals on Good Witch, but you can accomplish yes. with a festival and yeah. a show. But yeah, it's it'd be hard it, for me to get a script now that had a festival. It would have to, have to have some real unique angle. Mm-hmm. Well, I've said for a long time that they need to do one around a film festival, like an actual yeah. real, these things happen. And how fun I would know, it be? Film, <laughs> film, yeah. uh, film festival idea. <laughs> You can take my idea, but if they, if they had a film festival and you could have either two critics that meet at the film festival or, and that would be fun, or you could have two, uh, um, filmmakers, like directors that meet at the film festival and, yeah. uh, it would be so fun. Or an, or, or an actress and a critic or, a, a yeah, that would be good. Actor. There are all kinds of, have you, you should pitch this. Have you written it down? Have you written a treatment? I I should. No, you I should now it's out there, Rachel. <laughs> Somebody's gonna steal it, like me. No, cut this. <laughs> in fact, yeah, you should cut that part because I really <laughs> have. We've got a couple. We actually have a couple in the pipeline. Thank yeah. gosh for the Hallmark. But use like an actual real festival that people yes. actually do. You know, yeah, like... not, a, not a pumpkin festival, uh, <laughs> a film festival. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. well, thank you so much for uh, talking with us. This was oh, a lot sure, of fun. Man. I appreciate really? you having me and giving us some uh, attention because I do think it's the movie's worth it and uh, and I hope people like it. So thank you. Well, uh, we will probably have this, I think on the 10th, I think is when we will air it, October right. 10th, because the movie's right. on the um, 15th, right? Or 16th? 16th. 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 So very good. Uh, okay. Well, I would ask you for your social media, but I know you're not on social. So I have nothing. Um, I give it so. to you. I have nothing. Yeah, I'm too old. <laughs> uh, that ship passed me when I was <laughs> done when I was on Desperate Housewives. Yes. I waited too long. Oh, yes. So, well, thanks very much. And uh, hopefully we'll have you on again. Uh, Anytime. Just shoot me an email. Okay. Sounds good. I'd like to thank James for coming on the podcast. This was so much fun to get to talk to him. And let us know what you think of uh, all the different things that we talked about in the comment section or on Twitter. And uh, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, make sure that you are following the podcast, A Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really, really appreciate that. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have the Patreon group and merch store where we have Good Witch inspired merch. So check that out. So much to James and we'll talk to y'all later. Bye.